Hey DC fans, I'm Tiffany from Comic Pop and I'm proud to be your guide through the dreaming. This book is written by Simon Spurrier with art by Bilkis Evley and is a continuation of the story originally penned by Neil Gaiman in the late 1980s. So what has been happening? Well, in Sandman Universe we were introduced to many of the cast for the dreaming, which includes several characters from Neil Gaiman's Sandman. Lucian is Dream's right-hand man and keeper of the library, though as of late Lucian seems to be struggling with losing his memory. Mervyn is also there, Dream's sarcastic, pumpkin-headed janitor, along with Matthew the Raven, who was once a man and has a strong connection with Dream. We also are introduced to Dora, who can hop between the dreams of others, a feat which should not be possible. She also suffers from hunger, which a Dream entity shouldn't feel. She receives strange broken gifts at her tree home, and has a real chip on her shoulder when it comes to the promises the first incarnation of Dream made to her. No one's certain what Dora is, and that's honestly a mystery even to her. So let's get down to more of the plot. Well, the dreaming seems to be fractured. The sky is cracked and broken like glass. Humanoid golem creatures have begun to appear, and they have no faces or personalities or drive. They simply exist. Many inhabitants of the dreaming have opinions about what to make of these blanks, but there's a larger problem to contend with as it seems the dream has just up and quit. With no one to maintain order, it's up to Lucian to try to keep the dreaming functioning, all the while losing his memory, and trying to keep the secret that dream is gone so that no one attempts to conquer the dreaming. Dora displays another of her strange powers, her ability to move through the realm and beyond it in a way that we've seen dream do, which leads her to an interlude with a demon named Balam. From this encounter, he realizes that he can enter the realm of the dreaming, and pretty much immediately attempts to take control of it. After a fight with some of the dream entities, Balm's all but one when Dream appears. Balm, shocked, retreats tail between his legs. Dream commands that Merv give the blanks jobs, as one of them has started to form a face. Back in Dream's castle, Matthew the Crow goes to talk with Dream when he discovers that it's Lucian who is beneath the mask of Dream. It was a ruse to fool the demon and the others. Again, this is not the biggest problem at hand, because in the Gallery of the Endless, a means to contact the other Endless, Something new is growing, something that may be causing the breaking of the dreaming. Things keep getting worse, especially according to Merv, who has to keep trying to fix things as they break around the dreaming, and has to deal with the blanks, who he hates. I mean, like, really hates. Merv feels overwhelmed and underappreciated, and seems to believe that no one in the dreaming quite understands the danger the blanks present. Although it really seems that Merv's just kind of missing the larger issue that the dreaming's facing. In an effort to keep everything running normally, Lucene's reabsorbing dream entities in order to reclaim energy and help stabilize everything. This includes Merv's crew. Angry and upset, Merv spots Dora and follows her, and discovers that Lucian didn't just reabsorb Merv's crew for energy, but to also try and gain favor with Dora, who he hopes can help him find Dream. Upon hearing the Dream is gone, Merv decides that if he's in charge of fixing things, then he better get to work. So he seeks out the black chest, where the really terrible or redundant nightmares go and releases Judge Gallows. So, issue three starts with some backstory on Judge Gallows, who is an established character who has appeared in books like The Unexpected and The Dreaming from 1998. We learn that Gallows was created by Morpheus, the first incarnation of Dream, during the mid-1800s. He's a composite in response to some of the terrible things that mankind was doing to itself. For 50 years, humanity feared judgment in their dreams for their crimes, until times changed, and so did Morpheus' whims. He had new nightmares and felt that Gallows was redundant, though the judge manages to convince him to let him remain. After that, his judgment is harsh, so harsh that those whose nightmares he visits end up taking their own lives. It's for this that he's cast into the black chest. Merv believes that he's the judgment the dreaming needs, and while Lucian is wary, he's also exhausted and struggling with his mind. The judge appears to be more civilized, saying he's only there to observe and assess. Sending Lucian on a well-deserved break, the judge has the other nightmares gather the blanks. Upon observing them, Zig, a blank that Dora has taken under her wing, attempts to assassinate Gallows. Chasing after them leads them to Dora's home, where they demand she send him out. Dora, being Dora, declines aggressively. At this point, Gallows reveals that he has the black chest, where he calls forth Brute, of Brute and Glob fame, originally created in the 70s Kirby Sandman comic, to forcibly bring Zig out. But that isn't the only card that Gallows is holding. What I really like about this issue are the nuanced ways in which Spurrier is showing us that either something is wrong with the dreaming or something's changing in it. 
while I'm excited to find out what's going on with Dream, I'm satisfied that a book called The Dreaming is focused more on the realm itself along with its current inhabitants. I feel that like Spurrier is doing a nice job of blending the world of Sandman that we're familiar with new elements. He's also weaving a world of mysteries without it becoming overwhelming or tired. Bonus, you'll probably learn a new word with each issue of The Dreaming, like marginalia, which means marginal notes. Yeah, they've got a word for that. In terms of art, I think it really fits the story. I really love Evely's fluid panel layouts for dreams, and I'm really impressed with her ability to skillfully fill panels with an image that has all these layers that tell an entire story. And honestly, that panel of gallows being shot has a beautiful, simple gruesomeness to it. Overall, I think the dreaming may seem daunting to those who know of Sandman but haven't read it. However, I trust that Spurrier won't let you go too far out into the deep end. I think there are enough context clues in this book that those who are trying out the world of the dreaming for the first time can embrace this new story that exists in a well-lived world. You can pick up your own copy of The Dreaming 1, 2, and 3 in your local comic book store or online right now. I'm Tiffany from Comic Pop, and I'll see you guys next time on DC Fans. Pleasant dreams.